Hey, everybody. Welcome to True Crime Freaks, my new podcast. I want to tell you about the different ways you can support this podcast. One is you can go to my other podcast, Lights, Camera Pro, where I interview TV and film professionals about their careers. And I also do movie reviews and TV show reviews. You can check out one of my online courses. I've got an Adobe Premiere Basics course and a Secrets of How to Start a Podcast course. Those are at thinkific.com. Just search them when you go there. We also have a merch store. Just search the podcast at teespring.com and check out our hoodies, t-shirts, and mugs. I also have a children's book called Feldman Runs Away, which is on amazon.com. You can always support the podcast by going to Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen, subscribe, rate, and review. This podcast does have graphic content. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks, everybody. Bobo got up early and dressed for nursing school. She ate breakfast and studied for a test. Her family would never see her again. This is the murder of Holly Bobo. This episode uses articles from the Tennessean, 2020, WREG.com, Ranker, Fox 17, and The Cinemaholic. Holly Bobo was a 20-year-old nursing student who got ready for school in the early morning on April 13, 2011. A neighbor heard a scream coming from her house around 7.40 a.m. He told his mother and went to work. The neighbor's mom called Karen Bobo, Holly's mom at work, and told the secretary about the scream. The secretary gave the message to Karen Bobo. Clint Bobo, Holly's brother, wakes up at 7.50 a.m. He calls his mom at school to tell her that Holly's car is still there. This is where the story gets really weird. So Clint, 25, Holly's brother, saw her arguing with a man in the driveway. He thought it was her boyfriend because the night before, her boyfriend had told Clint that he was going hunting the next day. So the guy was wearing camo or a camouflage hunting outfit, and he just assumed that it was the boyfriend. Holly and the man who Clint thought was her boyfriend were screaming at each other in the driveway, and Clint didn't want to get involved. He knew the boyfriend. His sister was 20 years old. She wasn't 10, and he just didn't want to get involved in their argument. It looked like a heated argument. 7.55 7.55 a.m., Karen Bobo calls 911. She reaches the wrong county's emergency dispatcher. So Clint thought it was Holly's boyfriend. It wasn't. He didn't want to get in the middle of the fight. A few minutes later, Clint saw the man who was dressed in camouflage lead Holly into the woods. Clint tried Holly's cell. She didn't answer. He called her boyfriend's cell. Nothing. He loaded a pistol and went outside. He saw bloodstains in the carport where Holly's car was. A little before 8 a.m., Karen Bobo calls her house again. Her son tells her that he saw his sister and her boyfriend walking towards the woods. Karen Bobo tells him that the man is not Holly's boyfriend and to call 911. A little before 8, 10 a.m., The first deputy from Decatur County arrives at the house. Authorities come to believe that Holly Bobo was abducted. She is not seen again. April 15, 2011. The search for Holly is centered in an area where authorities found a lunchbox on Bible Hill Road believed to belong to Holly. April 16, 2011. Volunteers look through the woods hoping to find school supplies or items that may have come from Bobo's purse. Nothing was found. April 20th, 2011. A vigil is held. 
It's been one week since Bobo went missing. Okay, so I'll just say here that a lot of people thought the brother was involved. Why wouldn't he help his sister? They thought the boyfriend's story was a lie. He was later cleared by the authorities, but many people still hated him for not chasing after the man who took his sister. In my opinion, this was a young guy who made a mistake. I mean, he had a gun. He could have ran after the guy. He didn't even need to be bigger than him. He had a gun. It wasn't really his fault because Holly's boyfriend also wore camo and also told him he was going hunting the next morning. But he did see blood in the garage. If there's blood, you should go after the guy, even if it's the boyfriend. He wasn't a 10-year-old kid. He was 25 and he had a gun. What do you think? Should he have run after the man taking his sister to the woods? Or should he have not uh, done that because it wasn't safe? What do you think? Let me know on social media. Okay, so a few years pass here. And on March 5th, 2014, the TBI, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, holds a news conference about the Bobo case and announces that Zach Adams has been indicted on charges of especially aggravated kidnapping and felony first-degree murder of Holly Bobo. April 29, 2014, the TBI holds a news conference and announces that Jason Autry also has been indicted on charges of especially aggravated kidnapping and felony first-degree murder of Holly. A total of six men have been implicated in the connection with Holly Bobo's disappearance and murder. John Dylan Adams was arrested on unrelated weapon charges. John had intellectual disabilities, told officials that he saw Holly at his brother Zach's home after she had disappeared. He said that Zach was wearing camouflage shorts, Holly was sitting on a chair, and another man, Jason Wayne Autry, was standing just a few feet away. According to John Dillon, Zach's brother, Zach also boasted about raping Holly and videotaping it. The alleged videotape has never been found. He later recanted his confession, stating that he had been coerced, but it did lead to the arrests of Zach Adams, Jason Autry, and Shane Austin. Many of the details in the original confession were eventually found to be inconsistent with known evidence which is why it was not played in court. After further interrogations, two other men, Jeffrey and Mark Piercy, were arrested on charges of accessory after the fact and tampering with evidence. However, these charges were later dropped. Shane Austin committed suicide. September 7, 2014, two men looking for ginseng find human remains about 400 yards into the woods north of County Corner Road in North Decatur County. September 8, 2014, investigators confirmed partial remains found Sunday are Holly Bobos. Okay, so I will just tell you that the human remains that were found were supposedly in a bucket and it wasn't all of the remains. It was like just partial remains. I won't go into details, but um, now we're going to talk about the court case. Savannah, Tennessee. Lawyers delivered shocking opening statements in the Holly Bobo murder trial. Prosecutor Paul Hagerman described an alleged encounter between Zach Adams, the defendant accused of kidnapping, drugging, raping, and then murdering the 20-year-old nursing student and his friend Jason Autry. Hagerman portrayed Adams as a man who lived in the dark world of methamphetamine and morphine the day he abducted Bobo in April 2011. Adams allegedly wrapped her in a blanket and took her in his truck to a friend's home before calling Autry to help him get rid of the body. He presumed her to be dead and... He reportedly said he was going to gut Bobo so she wouldn't float to the surface once they tossed her body in the Tennessee River. As they were moving her, Bobo gasped 
Hagerman said, and that's when Adams allegedly murdered her in cold blood. Adams then allegedly got rid of her remains. Her remains were found three and a half years later. Even more recently, Hagerman said authorities found a gun Adams used to kill Bobo. Hagerman said he took her, he raped her, he killed her, he discarded her, he covered it up and almost got away with it, he said, but he didn't. Adams attorney Jennifer Thompson said her client was innocent. She said Adams was charged after investigators interviewed several other men and they needed someone to blame. Authorities found no hair, fingerprints, or DNA belonging to Bobo in a search of Adams' home before he was charged in 2014, Thompson said. Here are some witnesses who took the stand in the court case. Bobo's father, Dana Bobo, was first witness to take the stand, describing the agonizing day Holly Bobo went missing from her home in Parsons. Clint Bobo said, he met both Adams and Autry after his sister disappeared as his family investigated tips received from local residents. He said the person who walked into the woods with his sister didn't look like Adams or Autry. Jason Autry, the co-conspirator charged with the murder of Holly Bobo, testified against his former friend, Zach Adams, providing graphic details about the events that took place on April 13th, 2011. Autry originally at Zach's house for drugs and to help Adams with an unknown problem said he was given a morphine pill needed for his favorite meth morphine cocktail and was then shown what Adams needed his help with. Jason Autry told the jury he believed he was there to help Adams with the cooking of a batch of meth but was instead told he needed to help bury a body. Audrey says in the back of the truck was a body rolled in a multicolored farm blanket. At first, Audrey thought it was the body of someone who owed money from a drug deal, but instead Adams allegedly stated, that's Holly Bobo. While Audrey did not know Holly Bobo, he decided to help. As they drove to get rid of the body, Autry recounted his conversation with Adams without emotion, saying after they realized they had no tools to bury a body, they should gut her and then drop the body in the deep part of the river. Autry believed turtles would then do the rest of the work for them, eating her remains before anyone could find her. All right, so a couple of guys who make meth that are addicted to meth and morphine, uh, basically just think they can do whatever they want and just kill people and dump their bodies and turtles will eat them uh, and get away with it. So this is some pretty crazy stuff right here. Not uh, stuff that you think is happening every day at the neighbor's house. Court documents showed federal authorities had promised immunity to Autry, but state prosecutors have only promised to possibly reduce his charges pending his cooperation in his co-defendant Zach Adams trial. So Jason Autry knew Adams and he testified against him to get immunity. Zach Adams was sentenced to life without parole plus 50 years in the death, rape and abduction of Holly Bobo. So that guy is not getting out of prison. In January of 2018, John Dylan Adams accepted a plea deal and a 35-year sentence for the kidnap, rape, and killing of Holly Bobo. This is Zach's brother. Karen Bobo, Holly's mom, got on the stand to give her final words. First of all, she said, I would like for all of you to know that this decision has nothing to do with that animal, Karen Bobo said. It had to do with the future of her family. Karen Bobo looked over at Adams and demanded that he look into her eyes. 
She said, I know that my daughter fought and fought hard for her life, she said. And I know that she begged for her life because my daughter loved and enjoyed her life. But you chose to take that from her. And you have shown absolutely no remorse for anything that you have done. Karen Bobo thanked the jury for bringing the family justice. Well, another terrible tragedy from a man who thought he could do whatever he wanted and that he would never get caught. Zach Adams bragged about what he did to Holly, and he also said no one would ever found out. He is in prison for his entire life, plus 50 years, and he can think about how he wasn't going to get caught and how he could do whatever he wants. And, you know, there were several other people involved here that covered it up, that helped him bury the body, that, you know, didn't tell the authorities when they knew about what had happened. And it just seems like these guys were a bunch of meth heads and druggies and drug dealers. And they just they didn't care about their life anyway. But to take the life of a young woman who has her whole life ahead of her, and she has nothing to do with you. She just you know, lives a few miles away is just totally pointless. And there's so many people out there who think they can do whatever they want and just murder people. And I'm telling you, most of the time they don't get away with it. Even the Golden State Killer took decades to find. Someday they're going to find you. And yeah, you might live for 20 years, 30 years outside of prison, but someday they're going to get you. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next week in the next chilling episode of True Crime Freaks, You Freaks. Thanks so much. Sean signing off. Hey, everybody. Welcome to True Crime Freaks, my new podcast. I want to tell you about the different ways you can support this podcast. One is you can go to my other podcast, Lights Camera Pro, where I interview TV and film professionals about their careers. And I also do movie reviews and TV show reviews. You can check out one of my online courses. I've got an Adobe Premiere Basics course and a Secrets of How to Start a Podcast course. Those are at thinkific.com. Just search them when you go there. We also have a merch store. Just search the podcast at teespring.com and check out our hoodies, t-shirts, and mugs. I also have a children's book called Feldman Runs Away, which is on amazon.com. You can always support the podcast by going to Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen, subscribe, rate, and review. This podcast does have graphic content. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to Joseph McDade for the music. I will see you next time in the next chilling story on True Crime Freaks. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day. I'm Sean Vertor. Take care. (laughs) 